Philip or Ken of SB19 released his solo album, Seven Sins. The minute I learned of the title, I was so impressed and blown away with his courage to actually tackle something like this because it could go very, very cerebral or very, very emotional. And uh, and also for him to do something like this in a very much Catholic country, and I know he has a very strong faith as well, but he did splendid. Okay, I'm not going to do an ordinary reaction video because I've seen the music video already several times and I've been listening to the song several times all, as well. So this is just going to be some of the points that I've observed. And um, if you ended up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that notification button and uh, share the video if you can. Okay, on to the first point. I think this song is more cerebral than anything. And I say that because right from the get-go, I felt that there were two personas talking in the song. Uh, in the opening, there were two types of voices. One was like, oh shit, and then the other was go get, go get them. So it felt like one person was pushing the other to go and say whatever it is that he wanted to say or do whatever it is that he wanted to do. I wouldn't, I, it, must, it isn't necessarily two different people. It could be both Philip, one, the persona he's trying to hide and one, the persona that he has been showing to the public. But certainly the one that's been saying, go get them. It is the one that has been suppressed and is pushing the public persona to just let go and do whatever it is that he wanted to do. Um, and then that contrast has actually been sustained in the entirety of the music video. Um, there's this in the opening visual, it was him on a horse. But then later on, it was him on a on top of a building in obviously a very, very modern world. And then there is the contrast in the voices, one saying, oh, shit. And then the other was saying, go ahead, <laughs> go get them. Um, and then there's also the contrast of the voices that he used. One is on a head voice and one is very, very deep. And then there is, even in his clothing, he, he was wearing, for the majority of the video, he was actually wearing a very dark jacket with a Balenciaga logo in front. Um, and then he also was wearing a very bright yellow ensemble with his homie. Um, so it felt like, and then there's him with his homie and then him very, very much alone in a deserted plant and then on a deserted, deserted land. And so that's why I felt like that contrast was established throughout and reinforced throughout the video. And from the opening of the song, there was already, I could hear or I could feel, I could hear and I could feel two different personas, one trying to hold back and then the other trying to push that person to go out and do whatever it is that he wants to do. I do think that it is a diss on materialism. I uh, I heard from someone that it was like so superficial but because it was just like showing off the things that he had and stuff like that. But when I watched it, I felt like it was actually dissing that part or that emotion, that sin basically. Envy is when you covet other people's belonging. But it, he, through the music video, he was actually showing how the material things are actually consuming us instead of us just consuming all of these material things. So the brand, the, the price tags are actually controlling us and not the other way around. The other thing is that I also felt it was very intentional for him to use Balenciaga very very prominently in his music video it was the jacket that he was wearing and the brand was very very prominent in front because balenciaga was actually involved in a controversy two years ago three years ago when they used children when they dressed children in clothing and accessories associated with snm in one of their photo shoots and in one of the photos in that set they actually showed a manifesto of some kind about children abuse they, their brand actually took a beating and Kim Kardashian, who was representing them at that time, also got involved in the controversy. They survived that, obviously, but it was a huge thing because it was a very, very prominent example on how we can be so much of a prisoner, a hostage of a brand that even though they have disrespected children, they are still surviving. I am not sure if that is how 
Philip actually intended it to be, but that's how it landed on me, given my knowledge of what happened with the brand. His voice range is so eerie, my God. He can take it up there <laughs> so high, and then he can also pull it down so low. Uh, but as I've mentioned in the other, in the opening point, I think that's one of the reasons it convinced, that is one of the points that convinced me there are actually two personas in the song because of his uh, very intentional use of those two voice ranges. In his rapping uh, or rap singing in the first, second, first and second verses, he was just using his chest voice. And then when he rapped in the chorus or in the bridge, he was actually going really, really deep. Uh, but I think this point is more a credit to his voice. He can do so much with it. I think he has released a lot of songs, but I don't think he has shown half of what his voice can do. We had heard glimpses of it in some of the songs that they that he released with SB19, but I think there's really so much more. I think this is the kind of voice that can really give one song, a single song multiple dimensions, multiple meanings by just changing where he's at in terms of notes and in, in terms of bars. It just It's just prolific. That, that, I, that I really have no other way. This is just a different kind of voice. It's so good and so different that it is eerie. There, the, he really filled the music video with so much of symbolisms but one of the things that really stood out to me is how envy can actually do two contrasting things to one person it can lift you up so high and bury you down so low and he did that by using two different images of himself one riding a horse a burning horse on a deserted land and also him on top of a building in an obviously modern world i think that is a sign of how envy can manifest, how we can manifest envy in our everyday life and also still be subjected in the same ending and, uh, and that is us being alone. I think it is absolutely brilliant how he was able to do that. Like two contrasting world, but you're actually, in essence, you're, you're suffering from the same fate, fate and that is you being alone. Defiance needs to be controlled. Uh, one of there was a line in the song that kind of surprised me when he said the media uh no media can control me i don't care what you say because i thought it was so out of place as i've said in the beginning i was thinking that this is a narrative that there is a story of two people two personas contrasting uh, persona trying uh, contrasting personas trying to dominate the other and then that that song came and i thought that is a direct statement against the media it was only after several listens that it started making sense to me. He isn't really talking about, he's not just talking about the pressures to a celebrity, but the pressures that we all get, that we could all submit ourselves into because of social media. Anybody can be pressured by the social media uh, community. Anybody can be a bully in social media because we're faceless. So there's more, all of those things. So that was him making sure delivering a statement that if you want to defy the expectations of the public or the media make sure that you're defying it because it goes against your values or your personalities and not just because you wanted to defy it and in the music video he wanted to defy all of those so much that he actually ended up coveting the material manifestations of freedom instead of the essence of freedom. That's why he ended up wearing all of his branded clothing. Uh, that's how he ended up displaying the, his wealth and all of those things. So because he was trying to prove a point for the wrong reasons, he ended up submitting himself to the sin instead of fighting it. Last observation is that I appreciated the constant beat throughout the song. So he used just one beat throughout the song. It was really his flow and his lyrics that were making the song sound more dynamic. And that was really the focal point. It's really more the lyrics more than anything else. So that was very gutsy of him to just use one beat, almost the entire song. And um, it just goes to show how confident he is of the message that he is trying to deliver and the poetry of his lyrics. 
Okay, would love to hear your thoughts. I've heard from some people that many have misinterpreted the song or did not interpret the music video correctly. I'm not really sure, but would love to hear what you think of the music video and of the song. I haven't listened to the entire album. That is what I'm going to do before bedtime. <laughs> But I really would love to hear your thoughts. And um, if you ended up liking this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. And um, share the video if you can. Also, if you want to get in touch with me, you can do so in any social media that you see on your screen right now. But especially, please follow me on Patreon. There is a free membership. So if you just want to try things out, don't want to commit, that's fine. There's a free membership. We discuss a lot of things. Not just BTS, not just K-pop, but a lot of aspects of different Asian entertainment and Asian culture. We will have fun. Looking forward to uh, meeting you all there. Thank you so much and uh, appreciate you all.